today is a special day. I have said it. And we are just going to introduce briefly our, our minister who is not new to the house. We are always privileged at this month of the year to have her come and minister to us. She has come every year this month for as long as I can remember. Prior to when she used to come alone, even when we were in the old place, she used to come with her beloved husband, Reverend Hockett, who has gone to be with the Lord. But the mantle is still here. And the mantle is with her. And God is still doing what he is doing through her life. God uses her not only in Nigeria, but all over the world. And the strength and the grace that he has given her I don't know. I mean, it's not, it's not an ordinary thing. It's extraordinary, and we thank God for it. It's from the Lord. Church, I want us to celebrate the grace of God, the gift of God upon the life of Reverend Mrs. Doris Hockett, our mother in this house. I want us to celebrate everyone sitting down. If you are not challenged, please rise up. We need to celebrate the grace of God. We don't take the gifts that he has given us for granted. better praise the Lord is that your best praise the Lord Amen. take your seats be seated God bless you hallelujah what a joy to be here with you again I look forward every year to come on this second Sunday of October and be here in your church it's one of my favorite churches in all of Nigeria I give God praise amen he has kept me and he has kept you. We are here today in the presence of the Lord. We've already been blessed. Have you been blessed? Say amen. amen. Yes, and God has more. Amen. He's not finished yet. And so give him all the praise throughout this entire service today. Amen. It's a joy to live in Nigeria. This is a great country. I've been here for almost 35 years now and in Ghana many years before that. So uh, actually this is my, what, 56th year to live in Africa. I give God praise, amen. God has been faithful. I said God has been faithful. He keeps his promises, amen. And that beautiful song our brother sang just now, Bible says it plainly, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It didn't say there won't be weapons. They will come. Satan will fight against you, but we are on the winning side. Amen. And God has kept us. Praise God. So pray for me always as I travel and minister and preach the gospel. God has kept me all these years. Just a few weeks ago, I celebrated my 84th birthday. 84. May you have a long life. Amen. I hope to live to be a hundred years old, amen. God is so good. Even a chief in a place where we were dedicating one of the churches we've helped build in Ghana, the Christian chief looked at me and said, I'm praying God will even give you 20 more years. I said, wow, <laughs> hallelujah. So I praise God as people pray for me. Remember the prayer points. Number one, 
God's anointing, how I need God's anointing, how you need his anointing, or it breaks the yoke, it breaks the bondage, and God's anointing will be on your life as you witness for him, as you talk about Jesus, as you share the good news. Pray for me, God's anointing. Number two, pray for me, God's provision. How I need people to give and to sow seeds. Ask me, I can give you my Nigeria bank account number and tell you how to give at any time. And thank God as people today give to the ministry, I am blessed. Sow a seed that keeps me going. God's anointing, God's provision. Number three, God's protection. I know God's protection so clearly in times of danger. He has kept his promise that he will give his angels an assignment over my life and your life to keep us as we live. So trust God. Keep your angels busy watching over you. Amen. And then number four, that's God's strength. God to keep me strong and well more years to minister and preach the gospel everywhere I go. I've given you that prayer assignment. I've done it before. God's anointing, what's number two? God's provision, what's number three? God's protection, and number four, God's strength. That's A, anointing, P, provision, P, protection, and S, what? Strength, that's apps, A-P-P-S. Probably a real word in the new dictionaries. So keep me covered, apps, God's blessings, amen. Every time I come, I bring good things you can buy. They are there. You saw them if you came in the door here. And please take time afterwards, look and see what is there. There's caps. There's T-shirts. Even this cap says, Onward, Christian Soldiers. And then there's so many T-shirts, all colors, all sizes, beautiful things on them. There are so many books that are there, little ones, big ones. God's Success Formula. And a series of books, many different ones for singles, like this one, uh, Mistakes Single Ladies Make, How to Correct Them. Yes, I have a copy. And Mistakes Single Men Make, How to Correct Them, Prayers for Single Ladies, and Making Marriages, Making Relationships Work. There are so many books on marriage and getting ready for marriage. Many other good books I declare. I declare God's promises every day over my life. And a book on healing, Smith Wigglesworth, Mighty Messages on Healing. And books for business people. I know some of you have a business. 100 absolutely unbreakable laws for business success. Famous book, Conquering an Enemy Called Average. I'm sorry for you if you want to be average, be above average. Reach the top. Other books are there. Here's one called The Impossible. It is possible. And Secrets of Solomon, the richest man who ever, ever lived. Business breakthrough prayers. Prayers for victory over disappointment. Lots and lots of good books are there. I know you like to read. If you don't, I'm sorry for you. And you'll miss a lot of good things in your life. So read books. There are many good books there. And we have our beautiful calendar for the new year. Yes, probably the first 2024 calendar you've seen. We just got it out this week. It's printed every year right here in Nigeria for 33 years. So this calendar's been around a long time. 2024 will soon be here. You can read a lot about the ministry and then beautiful pictures at the top. Uh, this is my year of miracles and Every month, a colorful, beautiful picture. He gives peace in the midst of the storm. And beautiful, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. My family is blessed in Jesus' name. Get the calendar. Read it every day. There's the thought for the day. An inspirational word, different every day for the whole year. And so you'll want to put those pictures everywhere. One pastor actually buys about 40 calendars every year, and he frames these pictures and their lovely Christmas presents. So get the calendar, put the pictures all over your house. You will be blessed. So the calendar, the new one, is there. We also have some new ones like this made especially for us. 
using pictures of the calendar. That's the 2024 one. Don't give up. Here's another one, and it says the best is yet to come. So we have many different ones. And even a, a brother in Kenya, a pastor with a business, makes beautiful, beautiful table mats for us, placemats with the pictures from the calendar, which he enlarges and makes them strong, puts a picture on each side. So you need to get the table mats too. There are many different ones. And there are stickers, and there are key holders, and there are cups and mugs. Here's one of them. Look what this one says. Don't give up. My miracle is on the way. So beautiful things are there to buy that helps in supporting the ministry. Also copies of my own books. I have 16 books. They're not all there. Some are out of print. We sold so many. This one, Words of Blessing. It's also been translated into a language in India and a language in Ethiopia. Words of Healing, full of testimonies and teaching about healing. Uh, words of success, many of my messages are there. And uh, then we have the two books full of stories my beloved husband used to tell. Some of you remember him very well. He could tell stories and miracles in a way you would never forget. So I've written down a lot of them, volume one, volume two. They are there, you can get them. And then also we have my latest book, number 16, and I do have a number 17 I'm working on. Number 16, my book, My Heart is in Africa. I was just going to call it Story of My Life. God gave me a better title. <laughs> my Heart is in Africa, and it really is. You know, I've spent far more years of my life in Africa than anywhere else. And I give God praise. There's color pictures on the cover and on the back and testimonies and testimonies and almost 150 pictures inside. You read it. Be blessed. See what God has done in my life. All the things I've seen and experienced in Africa, I put so many of them there. Testimonies of healing. Testimonies of deliverance. People saved in prisons. People delivered from witchcraft. So many stories are there and testimonies. Get a copy if you can. I'll be glad to sign it for you. I give God praise as he has kept his hand on my life all these years. We came to Africa, to Ghana first. We came with all our hearts in July 1967. That's before some of you were even born or thought about. But God has kept me all these years, and I give him all the praise and all the glory. I've had many, many experiences. I think with my eyes, I've seen every kind of sickness and disease healed by the power of God. I know what miracles are because I see them so many times. And I believe, God, your testimony might be the next one. Amen. Just a few weeks ago in Ghana, I was there for six weeks. I go twice a year to northern Ghana where we lived and where we're helping build so many churches. And uh, we had an, an unusual experience. Uh, I had come from a far place out in the bush dedicating a church and we got back to where I was staying. As we got into the compound and I went into the house, my driver went outside to take the car to where he stays, and actually, as he looked at the car, one of the tires had come completely apart. It was totally flat. There were holes in it. It was piece to piece, and it happened inside the yard after I got there. Hallelujah! Another time God spared my life. God has been good. He will keep you. He will protect you until your assignment is over. In Jesus' name, amen. So many experiences. I want to share with you just now in some pictures, and we have them ready for you to look at. So let me share some testimonies right now with you. Amen. Amen. My pictures. They are somewhere. There, I see them now. That's one of my favorites that was made on our 50th wedding anniversary. We were in Abuja. Someone had taken us to the Hilton Hotel for a lovely meal. Saw a picture place and said, let's snap the picture. I thank God. He went to be with the Lord 
over 12 years ago now. I praise God for his life. Amen. I was side by side with a great man who loved God with all of his heart. He was very focused on doing the work of God as long as he lived. I praise God. May you have a long and happy marriage. It was almost 54 years. I praise God. And I thank God for my husband. Amen. Now it's just me traveling, preaching, and God has kept me. You see, both of us were called of God before we ever met. We knew we were going to live in Africa. And as God brought us together, we knew he wanted us to serve together in Africa. But he's gone. His assignment finished. Mine is still going on. And your assignment is still very much up to date today, today. So serve God. Our son, Jeff, has been a great, great blessing. Hope to talk to him on the phone tonight. He was born and raised in Ghana. I tell people my son is the real Ghanaian American, born after waiting 12 years. God is good. If you're waiting for a child, God will answer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We have a daughter-in-law, Sandra, and we have three grown-up grandsons. And the first one is married, so maybe one day we'll have great-grandchildren. Amen. Amen. We have seen miracles. Two ladies in northern Ghana in a remote village where we were preaching. Somebody led each one of them from their village not far away. They had to be led. Both of them were blind. A little girl leading each one. But that was their miracle day. As we prayed, those blind eyes began to see. And they were jumping up and down. We can see. We can see. Hallelujah. Once they were blind, now they see. And the next day, we were preaching in their village in the marketplace. And we saw them. And everybody had known them blind. They came out and people saw something happened. Their story changed. May your story change. Amen. Hallelujah. A little boy in Adoakiti, after the service, his dad brought him, carried him to me and said, pray for him. He can't walk. No strength in his knees, his legs. So I bent down and began to pray for those legs. And I said, Jesus, this little boy needs to run like others. He needs to play. And I prayed. God put strength into his legs. And he began to stand. He took my hand and we walked everywhere. Then he let go and said, I'll do it by myself. Walked everywhere. Told the dad, please don't pick me up again. I can walk. Amen. 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 Big chief in northern Ghana. I've known him since he was very young. He said, you know, I read your monthly emails. And if you want to get them, you can. Give me an email address. He said, I read them. I know that we're the same age. And I said, oh, I thought I, thought I was older than you. No, he said, you're born in August. I'm born in November, same year. This Christian chief is over many other chiefs. He used to be, many years ago, a presidential advisor and one time he was president over all the chiefs of Ghana and he's a retired professor a brilliant man loves God born again he said whenever I'm appointing a chief if there is a Christian person qualified I appoint that one I give God praise amen amen his wife I hadn't seen her for so many years. I would see him by myself. She was there that day in the church where I was ministering. They were there. I give God praise. Pray for Christian chiefs in northern Ghana. They are many. Hallelujah. This lady helped me year before last to get to some of the places in U.S. where I was going to minister. She and the husband have supported the ministry for so many years. And she told me, please pray for me, please pray for me. She had a problem with her colon. It was very bad. I prayed and it was instantly healed. She is perfectly well and strong today. Problem with her colon, totally healed, amen. Prayed for this little boy in South Africa. I didn't know him, but I met the grandmother in Swaziland, or Iswatini is called now. 
She said, pray for my little grandson. She said, ever since he was born, he's had a stomach problem. And every few days he's in the hospital again with this infection in his stomach and the doctors can't seem to know what to do. They've tried everything. Pray for my little grandson. I prayed. There's no distance in prayer. You can pray for somebody far away. And I prayed for that little boy and Jesus healed him. No more stomach problems out of the hospital. Shocked the doctors. God knew his problem all the time. Hallelujah. And he was healed. Amen. Amen. My cousin in the U.S., married to my cousin, and she began to have cancer. It was so serious some years ago. She was undergoing very terrible treatments and needed a miracle. We began to pray, and God began to heal. And in the middle of the treatments, the healing was total and complete, and the doctor said, well, I don't think you need them anymore. I've never seen it like this. You're the miracle lady. No more cancer in her body. It was totally gone. Hallelujah. She has never had a problem since. And she and the husband, my cousin, are pastors of a large Pentecostal church in Texas. And they pray for people and they get healed of cancer in their church. May you know a healing or someone you know who needs a mighty healing today. Amen. This man is a pastor in Kenya. We've known him for many years. Last year I had prayed for him. He said, my car is totally worn out. I've got to have a different car. He had decided exactly the kind he wanted, exactly the year model he hoped to get. And I said, God, let him find the exact car he needs. And he did. He's giving testimony. He said, it's like God exactly provided the car I need. He was so blessed. God can meet your specific need. Hallelujah. Amen. She's here in Lagos some years ago, and she had a sister holding up the picture for us to pray for. The sister had cancer and gone through all the treatments she could have here in Nigeria. They were telling her she needed to go to UK and get to the best specialist there. And so we laid hands on the picture, and we began to pray, God, do a miracle. Let her be totally, totally, totally healed. Amen. She went to UK, took all of her files with her. The doctors checked everything they possibly could to see what they could do to help. When they finally finished every possibility of ticks and scans and, and x-rays and everything, they looked at her and said, Lady, are you sure you're the same person in all these medical records from Nigeria? We can't find any cancer. It's totally gone. There's nothing needed. No treatment, no surgery. It's over. When Jesus touches you, the problem is over. Amen. She came back quickly to Nigeria, back at her job. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This lady stopped me in Ethiopia as I was walking down the aisle. I had been in front in a large church and I'd been ministering and now I was finished. So I was hurrying to the back where we had books and stickers for people to buy. And she stopped me on the way down, said, wait, wait, wait. Last year, I bought one of those key holders, and there are beautiful ones there from different countries. She said, I bought one, and you just quickly laid hands and said, Lord, let her get the car she needs. She said, I just want to know you now. A year later, my car is outside, and that key holder is holding my car key. That's faith, and God does it. Amen. Amen. He's giving a testimony. He's talking in Kenya about how God had helped him to get the job that he needed so much. And he had been jobless for quite a long time. And God gave him exactly the job that he wanted and needed and had prepared for. May God open a door to you. If you need work, God can do it and provide for you. Amen. Amen. She's giving testimony in Zimbabwe. She also had a big testimony of healing of cancer. Jesus touched her, and she said, they can't find it. It's totally gone. 
May God give you a testimony of something that may be in your body that shouldn't be there. May it be gone in the name of Jesus. He's the healer. Amen. This lady I met last year in a place in Swaziland or Iswatini. And I will be there again soon. I'm leaving this week for Southern Africa. I'll be ministering for the next two months in Zambia, Zimbabwe, Iswatini or Swaziland, Botswana and South Africa. I know you'll be praying for me. Last year, in the month of November, I was ministering in a church, a small church out in a village not far from the city. And this lady was there. We had stickers and she bought a little shiny sticker we got it in India. She was buying it and put it on her cell phone. You know what it said? It said, Jesus never fails. And that's so true. Jesus never fails. She said, I will keep it right on the back of my cell phone. We have little ones like that. You can get today, different ones. And, and so she left with that in her heart. I found out the next day when she came to a ladies meeting, I was at all day the next day on a Saturday in another church, she was there and she gave a testimony. I didn't get a word of it because it was all in Swazi, but somebody came and sat down beside me and explained it to me. I wondered why everybody was shouting and cheering. Then I knew. She said last night, I took a taxi as I always do, called a young man in a taxi and I didn't know him and, and he was taking me home. But all of a sudden, he turned off the road into the bushes and before I could scream, he stopped and said, I'm going to rape you. Got his knife out, had a big long knife. She said he held it right over me. I was screaming, Jesus, Jesus. Sometimes that's all you can do is scream, Jesus, 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 when you're in danger. Jesus, Jesus. And she remembered instantly that little sticker on her cell phone, though she couldn't see it in the dark. She had her hand on it. She knew that Jesus never fails. And before he could do his terrible thing, Jesus put fear in his heart. That young man began to shake and shake and drop the knife and ran for his life. Someone helped her, she screamed, and people came to help. Could have been a different story. But Jesus never fails. And she lived to tell the testimony the next day. I praise God for her life and her testimony. God can give big testimonies. Amen. Amen. This lady giving a testimony, it's in, I think, another place of Kenya. And she's talking about how last year I had prayed for her. And God had given her a, a fantastic answer to prayer in her business. May God give you an answer to prayer in your business. May this coming week be the best. And this month, October, be the best. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I saw her again in U.S. when I was ministering there, month of June. I prayed for her several years ago when her hand was so stiff with arthritis, she could not bend her fingers. Now she bends them perfectly. God has touched her hand. And she showed me again when I was there this year. Look, my hand still healed. She can use it perfectly. May God touch you if you need healing today. Amen. Amen. Man in Abuja met him some years ago. Was ministering in a little place where there were uh, retired servicemen and they were hoping to get their pensions, their gratuities, whatever they were supposed to get after serving as soldiers. Jesus did two big miracles for him. And if you would look closely, you might see the little tear coming out of his eye. That man was gloriously saved that night. Miracle number one, biggest miracle in the world, salvation. Gave his life to Jesus. His name written in heaven. <laughs> Then the second miracle, we were praying for people. I was praying for people who needed healing. He said, I can't hear out of one of my ears for years. It's been deaf. It popped open that night. Hallelujah. He could hear everything. Two big miracles. Somebody here, may you get some miracles in your own life today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 
This man has a, an unusual story. I was ministering in a certain church right here in Lagos some few years back. And, and after service, most people were gone and I was still praying with people. I was praying with the pastor's wife and, and everybody had gone, just the, my driver and I were there and he was busy doing something with the books and things. And I was praying for her. And, and then she said, I don't get your monthly emails. And I said, please let me get my phone and put your email address. I have your husband's, but I'll put yours there. And I went to my purse and I couldn't find my phone. I said, ah, my iPhone isn't here. She said, are you sure you brought it? Yes, I spoke to your pastor on the way here, so I know it's there. It was not there. I looked, and also my small phone, my little Blackberry was not there. I was crying. My phones are gone. My phones are gone. She said, oh, what on earth has happened? What has happened? She went upstairs, and her husband was in the church office with several other people, and he said, ah, he came down quickly. We have cameras. We have security cameras, which I didn't know were there, and, and we're going to look at it right now. We'll, we'll see who the thief is. We'll get your phone back. Well, they went up quickly and went through the film, and, and the camera was still on. They had forgotten to turn it off after service. It was still on. And they looked and looked, and they said, Ah, we have seen a young man come into the church after everybody was gone. You were there, but uh, the people were gone. And we saw him come in with a bag over his shoulder, and he went straight to your purse in the film, and we saw him reach his hand in and get something put in his bag and reach a second time. He said, uh, I'm sure that's the thief, but none of us recognize him. We don't know who he is. And so he said, we'll find him. We'll get you another phone. Well, that's not the same thing as you know very well. And so the next day, sure enough, they got another phone, something like mine and like the small one as well. And, and I was stuck. You know, a few days later, it was the following Sunday. In the afternoon, he called and said, we got your phone, or Monday, the day after the Sunday. He said, we looked at that film, and we enlarged it, and we showed it in the church the next Sunday. And we said, people, we had a great service woman of God here last week. We were embarrassed. Somebody stole her phone. They showed the picture in the church, and we don't know him. One man stood up and said, I do. He's my neighbor. You told us all to invite people. You even printed little handbills and said, invite I invited my neighbor. That's him. <laughs> wow. After service, pastor and the big, tall assistant pastor went there. And, and they saw that man. He said, please come. We'll go to the house right now. Well, they went, the three of them. They took the film. <laughs> and and knocked on the door and, and the parents came in and this guy was there, their only son. They looked at the film. What could they say? Their son was a thief. They were crying, they were crying. They said, ah, we had no idea. Our son is a thief. We are broken hearted. We love God and he doesn't. The big, tall assistant pastor said, young man, what did you do with that phone? Well, he began to stammer. I, I, I sold it to a man who buys phones, and there are plenty like that. And, you know, he had gotten some small amount of money. The assistant pastor stood to his full height, and he said, that phone will be back on the pastor's desk in the office by noon tomorrow, or the police will come for you. We've already told them about it. We said, give us time to see what we can do. They'll come for you. Well, the phone was on the pastor's desk <laughs> the next day before noon, for sure. I got my phone back. Maybe one of few people who's ever gotten a smartphone back. My phone, hallelujah. But that was not the end of the story. I was at that church another time, a year later. When I finished ministering and went to the back, as I always do, and sat down, this assistant pastor brought this young man to me and said, I want you to meet him. He's the one who stole your phone. I sat there and I said, I have forgiven you. You did a very bad thing, but I know God has forgiven you. He said, 
I have been born again. I gave my life to Christ in this church. I'm almost finished with the new converts course. They're trying to help me to get back to school and eventually have a job. Life changed. Hallelujah. His parents were so grateful to God that mercy had been shown to him. They said, we'll leave our church and come to that one the rest of our lives. They have shown mercy to our only son. Story changed. May you see a story change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the story of that picture. Amen. She's in Kenya. She was staying in the same home in Nairobi where I was staying with a lady I knew for years. And, and she had a granddaughter in the hospital. That granddaughter had so many problems. A, a little baby, maybe six months old or less. And Jesus healed her in the hospital. She gave the testimony a few days later and said, oh, she was suffering. She was sick. She needed a miracle. We were so worried about her. She got the miracle that night. May you pray for somebody in the hospital and see a miracle happen as you pray. Hallelujah. I go to India. I've been there 16 times. I'm set to go again next year. Hallelujah. Pray for India. My husband always wanted me to put on a sari, and they are hard to put on. That cloth is so long, if you've ever seen a sari. I have to have help to get it just right with the pleats. They know immediately if you don't get the pleats just right on it. And so I love to go to India. They ask me, are there Christians in Africa? Just like here in Africa, people ask me, are there Christians in India? <laughs> oh, yes. God has his people in every part of the world. Amen. Amen. A family, I prayed for the man and his wife in India. And I said, God, they've been married eight years and they want a baby so bad. And when I was in India, the next time I saw their handsome little son, God answers prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. I minister every time I'm in India in Madurai in this Bible school. Many of the students God is taking to North India. And that's where there are very few Christians. Some of the small states in northern India have so few, few Christians. Lots of persecution, lots of troubles. Thank God he's sending young people to the hard places of India. Amen. Amen. I met this couple in a church the next day on Sunday. They were there from that Bible school. They said, we are graduating very soon. God is calling us to one of the toughest places in North India. I've been praying for them. God to give them souls. God to protect them and make a difference in that hard place of North India. Amen. We're helping build churches all over northern Ghana, so close to my late husband's heart. I have continued helping put roofs on churches and working with pastors to finish them. This one, the roof was half on right now, this coming week. Two more churches in India will finish putting their roof on in Africa, in Ghana, northern Ghana, where we used to live. Amen. Villages, small churches like this, made of mud balls, mud bricks, we can help them build and get a roof on and together finish. Bigger churches in towns, cement blocks, we have seen the hand of God. Amen. Amen. There's another one. I praise God they can make them so nice, all different types of small churches in the villages that, you know, I'm very strict. They must get their walls up. And that might take years sometimes. And whenever I can, I'll help put a roof on as God provides. Amen. Amen. There's another one. That one got painted and got dedicated to the Lord. I have preached in that one. I give God praise. All over the northern part of Ghana. Very familiar because we lived there our first 18 years in Africa. Amen. People outside 
under the trees meeting, people getting saved in crusades and, and ministry outside. We pray and God helps get a church up soon. Pastors are so busy evangelizing and working and God is doing great things in northern Ghana. Amen. I praise God. This was a group of people getting ready to start building a church and they need one just meeting under trees or sometimes in a classroom or sometimes uh, just out in the open. God is doing great things in northern Ghana. Amen. There's one of the village churches, a place called Gadantinga. It is so hard to get to. No car has ever been there. And even a motorbike is very, very hard to get there, even in dry season. But we've helped build a church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many times when I'm there and helping to open officially another church, especially in the towns, the bigger ones, I get to cut the ribbon or, or open with the key. One time they brought me the wrong key and we had a hard time finding the right key, but we got it open and got the church. It's a joy. Sometimes I have tears when I'm turning that key or cutting that ribbon to open another church we've helped build in northern Ghana. Amen. There's one getting a roof on. That one, it wasn't quite on at the time that, that I was going to preach there. We had to wait till they finished putting the roof on. But it's a joy to help. And people give everywhere I go to help. Amen. Amen. There's one completely finished. I praise God. Beautiful. In a town. And I thank God we've been able to help build so many. There's another one, that one, a place called Bincheratanga. I give God praise. Hallelujah. There are many. They are all different. And pastors are so happy. And people all over Nigeria are giving. This one, Kolago. Kolago. You have to sort of say the K in the back of your throat. Kolago. I give God praise. Amen. Amen. And another one, Bisaldo. I thank God. All over northern Ghana. They are coming up. We were on number 46 when my husband went to be with the Lord. He said, we're going to do at least four more and get to 50. We've gone way past now. We are on 130. 130 right now. I give God praise. Amen. Amen. This one, Nayoko. I praise God. And that place, they said, ah, it's big. It's already full of people. God has blessed. Amen. Amen. Towns everywhere. This one, Mimima. And four people gave their lives to Christ in the dedication service that day. That was just last year, August. Amen. Amen. There's the four people. A man and three ladies gave their lives to Christ even in dedicating a church. We praise God. Hallelujah. Ah, this one, a place called Janania. We praise God. They are all over the north. I know northern Ghana very well. I'm there twice a year. I stay more than six weeks each time working with the pastors of northern Ghana to build churches. Amen. Amen. There's another one. I praise God. Bimbago. And they have helped to build, and I've worked with them to help build village churches all around that town. I give God praise. Amen. So pray for this part of the ministry. This one, Gorgo, has big rocks all around the place. I praise God. Every one of those churches is a testimony. I smile when I hear people say, oh, we must develop northern Ghana. I smile and say, I'm doing my part. I'm helping develop northern Ghana to build churches. Amen. And people helping. The money comes in Naira. It comes in dollars. It comes in Pula. It comes in Rand. It comes in shillings. Every place. Pound sterling. Canadian dollars the other day. God is doing it as I travel and minister. And you can have a part. Door is open at any time. Amen. That one, I praise God, Diari, all over the northern part. I know northern Ghana very well. Uh, now I know Nigeria quite well. Amen, amen. Ah, that one dedicated just in January of this year, Kankadina. 
And that pastor went out with his people a few weeks later this year and had a tremendous response preaching in a village and we're already helping them build a church in that village too. Amen, amen. The chief of that village is one of the strongest members of the church and he's my friend. He said, wow, you don't remember me because I'm, I'm grown up now and I was a teenager when you prayed for me and I gave my life to Christ. Amen. Amen. We help pray for babies everywhere too. Not just helping build churches and traveling as a missionary evangelist, but I pray for people to have babies. And this couple, they're originally from Nigeria. They were pastoring at that time in Habaroni, Botswana. They were new and every year preaching there. I, that Wednesday night, place full of people, big building. And I had said, I was married. My husband and me were married for 12 years without a child. And God answered and gave us our son. This couple came after service and said, wow, we're just seeing you for the first time. We didn't know you. But they said, hey, we've been married 12 years. We're praying for a child. Will you pray we get the same blessing? I said, sure. I took both their hands and said, in the name of Jesus, when I come exactly a year from now, I'll see your baby. I did. I saw their handsome little son. God answers prayer, and he does great and mighty things. I was ministering in that same church last year. I think it was in Botswana. They have a different pastor now. But, you know, when that picture came up, it happened to come because I have hundreds of pictures. That one just happened to come up. And they cheered because they remembered that miracle. It had happened right there. May God give you testimonies. Amen. Amen. Prayed for her in Kenya, her and the husband. She got twins. She got a little boy and a little girl too. Uh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Ah, this is a couple in that far village where I can't get in the car. Hadn't been there. Can't get on a bike for that long, though I do get on bikes, but not to go that far. And so they had had this miracle son after 10 years of marriage. I didn't even know them. I just heard about it, prayed for them in the faraway village. And when I was preaching in another place where they could get to it, they walked 10 miles to come and show me their son. I give God praise. Miracles still happen. This couple here in Nigeria were told years ago they could never have a child. It was physically impossible for her to conceive and have a child. But look what God did. <laughs> he gave them four beautiful children. You see, God does miracles. I said, God does miracles. Amen. Amen. Prayed for her and the husband in Abuja for years, years, years. They are pastors in Abuja. 18 and a half years. And look at their beautiful little daughter. They're in their 40s, mid 40s, late 40s by now. I give God praise. God does miracles. And this couple in Uganda, they're tremendous blessing. Prayed for her, for her husband, and she was almost 40 years old when God brought a Ugandan doctor back from U.S., and he married her. And they had their wonderful wedding, both of them nearly 40 years old. And then we prayed for a baby. Had a miscarriage. Prayed, and she had another miscarriage. I said, God gave her twins, and he gave her quadruplets. Hallelujah. Four babies the same day. I give God praise. They are four years old now. They have become very famous. Everybody, everywhere they go wants pictures. Those little four-year-olds love Jesus with all their heart. I know them well. I spent hours and hours, almost a whole day with them in February, uh, March, 1st of March when I was in Uganda. And they were all so happy to see me. Grandma, Grandma, we're seeing you again. And I give God praise. They're in school now. And how they love Jesus. I was visiting them again the next year. Growing a little bit. And now they are getting big. I give God all the praise. He gave them far more than they asked for. May God give you more than you ask. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I've shown you a lot of pictures. I think that's the last one. I want to share 
from the word. There it is. Amen. Amen. There they are. I wanted you to see that one. First day at school, I give God praise. How would you like to have four from one family? How would you like to get four ready for school every morning? Same age. I give God praise. May you have a big testimony in the name of Jesus. I want to share from the word. I will sing for you when I finish. I want you to get your Bible now, get your pen, get your paper, write it down. You've already been told I was going to share something I hope touches somebody today. I love to take a word from the Bible and tell you everything about that word I can tell you. I can take the word miracle, the word possible, the word bold, the word pray, the word heal, the word fear. They're in my books, lots of them. I want to take a word today. This has four letters. Get your pen and paper, click it into your phone, or do both if you can. The word is pain. P-A-I-N. What to do when you're suffering pain? There's all kinds of pain. There's physical pain. You can, you can have a sickness or an accident or some physical problem and hurt and hurt and pain and pain and pain. You need a miracle. You can have pain from a broken heart. Jesus said, I came to heal the broken hearted. You can have pain from a loss. Maybe you've lost someone, somebody very dear to you. Or maybe even some member of your family can't find them. They've, they're gone. There's all kinds of pain. Pain from terrible habits and it's hard to give them up. Pain from mistakes you've made. Pain from losing a job. Pain from disappointment. There's so many kinds of pain to suffer. Listen well. I want to give you some scripture now. Write this one down. Here it is, and it's very familiar, and it's found in Revelation chapter 21, verse 4. Revelation 21, verse 4. The Bible says, and God shall wipe away all tears. Hallelujah. And he said there will be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain. They are gone forever. Say forever. We know that hasn't come yet. That's in heaven when there's no tears. Hallelujah. There's no pain. There's no sorrow. Just joy and peace and love. We look forward to that day. But we are still in this world. And there is still pain. Some of you even today may be going through a terrible time of pain or loss. Maybe the person sitting beside you doesn't even know about it. It could be possible. Maybe you know somebody. Pain, pain, rejection, pain. There's so much pain. One man told me, I, my father had three wives, and, and my, my mother was the third wife, the youngest one, and I was the only child, and I was rejected. She never had more children. I was rejected. My brothers, my sisters treated me badly. Rejection. He said, I suffered. Pain is terrible. But God helps us in times of pain. He will wipe away all tears one day, one day. Here's another verse. It's Psalms 42, verse 5. Psalms 42, verse 5. David said, why is why is my heart cast down? Why is my heart broken inside me? Why am I discouraged? Why am I sad? In the middle of the verse, he said, wait a minute. I'll put my hope in God. I won't put my hope in anything else. I'll put my hope in God. I will praise him again. If you're suffering in pain, may you praise God again. He can restore you. Amen. Even in northern Ghana, the language I still remember a lot of called Mampuli. When you say I'm sad, you say in Sufu, and Sufu is your heart. In Sufu Sa'im, that means my heart has fallen down. <laughs> Why is my heart fallen down? Why am I sad in Sufu Sa'im? But you can praise God again. Hallelujah. He can restore your joy and your peace. One more verse I want to give you. It's First Samuel chapter 30, 30, verse 6. Somebody's already quoted this verse. First Samuel 30, verse 6. It tells about how David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. 
It was a terrible thing that had happened. David and his mighty men. Read about those mighty men. They would amaze you. Those mighty men, they had been gone. And now they came back to where they had their camp with their wives and children. And they were shocked. They couldn't believe their eyes. Everything was gone. The enemy had kidnapped all the wives and children. And they had stolen everything. There wasn't anything left. Then they burned the camp. And these mighty men came back and saw it. They were so shocked. They sat down and cried and wept till they had no more tears. David and his mighty men suffered. Then the men got angry and said, David, you, you took us away. <laughs> we could have been home protecting our families. They even talked of killing their leader, David. It was the lowest day of his life. He had to get alone somewhere with God. And sometimes when you've lost everything or your heart is so broken or you're suffering so much, you better know where to get alone with God. And he began to cry and he began to pray. You know, he wrote a lot of the Psalms, which are songs. Maybe he began to sing some of those beautiful Psalms from the Bible. He began to remind himself of the goodness of God. David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God, and he will... He will encourage you as you encourage yourself. Maybe nobody else has a word for you, but God always is there. He's never left you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus said, I'm going to be with you always till the end of the world. Amen. And he began to encourage himself. And God began to talk to him. And he said, pursue after the enemy and you will find them. And you who will recover all. Wow, what a promise. And eventually they found the enemy. And they were there and they made their plans. And the enemy was jumping. The people were dancing and singing to all their false gods. And maybe in the distance they could see their wives and children. I don't know. But they planned their strategy. The battle began it lasted 24 hours, if you read it and think about it. It was an all-day, all-night battle. But they won the battle. The enemy fell, and those who couldn't fall ran away, and they had a great victory. Bible says, and David recovered all. May you recover all. Whatever you've lost, may God even give you double portion. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Write the letters of the word pain, left side of the paper, up and down, capital letters, P-A-I-N. Take your pen, go over it very well with your pen so you see it very nicely. And if you're doing it in your phone and can make it bold, try. And let's come out from each letter with something simple. Are you ready? First letter, P, pray. Pray in faith. No, just pray. Pray in faith. No faith, no miracle. Pray with faith in your heart when you're suffering pain, when you're, you're wounded, you're hurt, your heart has fallen down, you are sad. Maybe physical pain and you need the miracle of healing today. You're in the right place. Maybe it's your mind and maybe it's, it's something you've lost or some person you've lost or, or who knows what it might be, but God knows your heart. Pray in faith. Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. When your ears hear a song about faith, faith can come in your heart. When you hear a message about faith or listen to some a CD or something about faith or you read a book on faith, faith comes. Another way faith comes is for your ears to hear your mouth speaking out the word of God. Today, we have said that verse, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Praise God, you can say it over and over. All things work together for my good. Praise God. 
I'm, I'm the head, I'm not the tail. You can speak out the word of God. You can say, I am healed in Jesus' name. I am strong. You can speak the word of God. Today is the day the Lord has made. I am more than a conqueror. Speak his word and your ear will hear it and faith will come. Say it out loud. Healing will come. Miracles will happen. Pray in faith. Put this verse on that very same line. It's Mark chapter 10, verse 27. Mark 10, 27. Jesus said here, with God, all things are possible. That's the faith we have that nothing, absolutely nothing will ever be impossible with God. With God, miracles are no big deal. They keep on happening. The day of miracles is not over because the God of miracles is still alive today. So believe it with all your heart. With God, all things are possible. Pray in faith to the God who does miracles. Amen. Let's go on to that next letter now. When you have pain, when you need a miracle, here's the A. Always. Here's the A. Always trust God. Simple, simple. Three words. Always trust God. God will see you through. God will lift you up. God has great plans for you and he's not finished with you yet. Amen. God has his hand on your life. He cares about your every need. Trust God. If you trust yourself, <laughs> you can make a mess out of everything. And if you trust other people, sometimes they'll break your heart. But you can trust God. Put your trust in him. There's an old song that says, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord." Oh, what a song. There are others about trusting Jesus. Put your trust in him. Here's a verse for the same line. Write it. Psalms 37, verse 5. Psalms 37, verse 5. That verse is divided into three parts. The first part, the second part, we can do. The third part, God does it. After we've done first and second part. Here's the verse, Psalms 37, 5. It begins by saying, commit thy way unto the Lord. Oh yes, God, take me. I commit myself to you. All I say, all I do, I give it to you. Commit your way unto the Lord. I'm yours, Lord. Second part, you can also do it. Second part of the verse says, and trust also in him. We can put our trust in him and say, God, I'm leaning on you. I'm trusting in you. Third part now, God will do. And he shall bring it to pass. He shall make it to happen. What you cannot do, God can do. For with God, all things are possible. Trust in him. You will see miracles. Trust in him and it will heal that pain. Trust in him and you will see a better tomorrow. Hallelujah. Let's go on. Here's the next letter in that word pain. What is it? The I. Now when God gave this to me, I said, wow. Here's the I. It's for the word ignore. That's right. I-G-N-O-R-E. In, in, ignore Satan's lies. Ignore Satan's lies. He will lie to you and tell you you're going to die. He will lie to you and tell you you're nobody. He will lie to you and say nobody loves you. Satan will lie to you. The Bible says Satan is a liar and even the father of lies. You know that verse. One man even went so far as to say, Aha, you know what I do? When Satan says it can't be done, I say, Thank you, Satan. Now I know it can be done. Satan will tell you you're a nobody. I say, thank you, Satan. I know I'm somebody. He's a liar. Hallelujah. Know his lies and ignore them. He will put fear in your heart, make you shake from fear. But you see, ignore his lies.
weeks. He will tell you you're not going to make it. He will tell you your business will close. He will tell you the contracts will never come. He will tell you that money owed to you will never be paid. Uh, ignore his lies. Ignore Satan's lies. When you're suffering pain, that's one of the ways to see the answer is to ignore him, his lies. But this verse on that same line now, it's James chapter 4 and verse 7. James 4, verse 7. Oh, that's a familiar verse. We know the part that says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Let's get the whole verse. That verse begins by saying, and submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Get the whole verse. Submit is not always easy. If you join the Nigeria army or any army, one of the first things you learn is to click your heels, so salute and say, yes, sir, yes, sir. You're going to obey. Submit yourselves to God. Become part of God's family, God's army. Submit yourselves and say, God, not my will, but your will. God, I will follow you all the days of my heart. God, I belong to you. There's a full stop after that part of the verse. Then it goes on to say the familiar part. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. I like to say it like this. When I submit myself to God, I have power to resist the devil and he will flee. That doesn't mean just run away. That means run with fear, with terror in your heart. Flee. It means to run for your life. That's fleeing. Really, really getting away as fast as you can. That's Satan getting away from you, the child of God. You take authority over him, and you know that God is with you. You can, you can submit yourself to God. He will give you power to fight against the devil. Our weapons are not carnal. They're not man-made. Can't take a gun, shoot Satan. Can't take a knife, cut him to pieces. Can't even take a grenade or a bomb and wipe him out. Nope. But our weapons are mighty through God. We can pull down Satan's strongholds. We can win the battle. You can be the first and not the last. You can be the winner and not the loser. Hallelujah. We belong to Jesus. We are on the winning side. We resist him. We fight against him. We pray. We are covered with the blood of Jesus. We know the word of God and we say it. We believe it. It works in our lives. Don't listen to the lies of Satan another minute, another second. There's a certain man I know right here in Nigeria. known him for years. He told me a story recently. He said, my wife, uh, in month of May, I think it was, or June, was going to be, she's going to be, and this was early in the year, she's going to be 50 years old. And we're planning a big celebration. And it's going to be great. He said she came to him a few days before he was telling me the story. And he, she said, honey, 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 she was crying when he came in from work. There's something I have to tell you, I have to tell you right now. He said, what is it? I, I, we need to get to a quiet place. Can, can we go in the bedroom and sit on the bed? Yes, of course, honey. What is it? What's troubling you? I have to tell you something. She said, I have been hearing a voice speaking to me for years, telling me I will never live to be 50 years old. I will never celebrate my birthday. I have been told by that voice, my children, I will never see them finish university. I will never be at their weddings. I'm going to die, die, die. He said, what on earth are you saying? She said, die, die, die. When we were home at Christmas time in the village and I enjoyed the time with the family, the voice said, you will never see your family again. You'll be gone before the next Christmas. He said, what on earth are you saying? And, and he knew exactly what to do. Immediately, he said, I spoke up and I said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke this voice. In the name of Jesus, this voice must stop right now. Satan, take your hands off my wife. Let her alone. She shall live and not die. We will celebrate. We will celebrate. We will celebrate. And the voice stopped. 
She said the voice had talked to her and told her all these lies. And the, and the voice had said, if you ever tell anybody, even your husband, you will die quicker. She didn't die. <laughs> Hallelujah. She had courage to speak up. And the voice of Satan stopped. She's alive today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't listen to any voice of Satan. Don't listen to the lies of the devil. Ignore his lies. You are somebody. You're going to live and not die. You will make it. That's why people take their lives sometimes. They think they're nothing. They've listened to the wrong voice. Jesus is alive and well today. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Ignore Satan's lies. I told you the word pain. The P is what? Pray in faith. I told you the A is what? Always trust God. And the I, ignore Satan's lies. Some of you are trying to get ahead of me. You've already guessed what the N is. And maybe you're right. The N is three words again. Never give up. Never, ever, ever, ever give up. Keep on praying. Keep on believing. You're going to make it. Pain will not last forever. God has a plan for your life. Never, ever, ever give up. Maybe you're already ahead of me and guessed my last verse. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Philippians 4, verse 13. Never give up. What does it say? I, whoever I am. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can make it because I have Jesus in my life. Hallelujah. Be strong. Be bold. You're going to make it. But you must never, ever, ever give up. God has a miracle for you. I have a friend, even in the U.S. I've known her for many, many, many years. She has a grown-up daughter. And the grown-up daughter has been everywhere and done everything and traveled all over the world, had big jobs. But she began to be depressed and discouraged. That's part of the pain Satan will bring is depression, discouragement. And she began to listen to the voice of Satan. You are nobody. All these things you've done amount to nothing. They're coming for you. You're going to be put in prison the rest of your life. She hadn't done anything wrong. You're going to be put in She was living in fear. And she took her life. She took her life. Maybe you know somebody like that. Or someone who has talked about it. Or someone who is attempting even to plan everything. Don't give up. Keep on praying. That person on your heart today, it's not an accident. You have somebody on your heart. I have people on my heart today. People who need healing. People who need a miracle. Never, ever, ever give up. You can do all things through Christ because he strengthens you. He has a good plan for your life. You don't have to live in pain and sickness forever. You can be healed. Jesus is the mighty healer. You can be set free from the bondage. We knew a young man in the U.S. He had even stayed with us for some weeks, trying hard to get off drugs. We tried to get him into a Christian rehab program. He wouldn't go. He even found some drugs not far from our house in America even. They're very much available everywhere. Went back home to his family. They tried their best. But he took his life. So sad. So sad. You can make it. You can be somebody. God can lift you up and your story can change. You may be on the bottom and God wants you to be on the top. You may be sick and you need healing. Jesus is here. I want to sing for you. And we have my music there. Listen, it's one of the songs on my CD. And I love to sing it. It's about healing. Healing of your body. Healing of your heart. Healing of your mind. Healing of your emotions. Listen well. It says, reach out. You'll be healed. Just reach out to Jesus. Listen. My music. <laughs> Fear 
and doubt come against your mind and has your faith been sorely tried well just lift lift up your eyes here cometh your help yes it's jesus for you he has died and if if by faith you can just reach out to him i know he'll meet your end He's going to respond to that cry that's from your heart. Jesus will touch you and he'll make you whole. So just reach out and be healed in the name of my Jesus. Just let your faith rise up in your soul. So just reach out and be healed in the name of my Jesus. He's going to touch you and he'll Right now, Jesus will touch you. Just listen to the music. Listen. Jesus heals today. Every sickness, every disease. I share testimonies with you. Could share many more. I know the power of Jesus to heal our minds, heal our emotions, take away depression, discouragement, all the things that have happened in your life to put you down. Jesus lifts up, heals every sickness, heals every disease restores today so just reach out and be healed in the name of my Jesus just let your faith rise up in your soul so just reach out today and be healed in the name of my Jesus, he's going to touch you and he'll make you whole. Oh, Jesus will touch you today and he'll make you whole. Yes, I believe he's touching somebody right now. And he's making you totally, completely. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Stand up. I want to pray. Everybody on your feet, stand up just now. Bow your heads. Let's pray. Let's talk to Jesus. Bow your heads. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your word today. I've done my best to share it in a simple way from my heart. Touch our minds, touch our lives, touch us today right where we are, our point of need, and touch somebody as we just reach out to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Maybe you're here and you're not saved. I'd like to begin right there. And you're tormented by all the sin in your life. And Jesus sets free. He said, everybody who comes to me, I will never send them away. He said, come to me. So you can come to Jesus, repent of your sins and say, Jesus, I want to join your family. I want to be born again. If you're that person, come quickly to the front. Would you do that? I want to see you and pray for you. Anybody, you need to be saved. I prayed with so many people to be saved. 
Just come, and I will pray with you. Anybody, just come right now. Come quickly to the front. Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. Your sins are not too many. Jesus forgives them all. Come quickly, be saved. Bible said you can be a new person in Christ. Bible says old things are gone. Everything is new. Anybody today, you need to be saved. Come quickly. I'm looking. Jesus saves. Hallelujah. One day when I was a little girl, nine years old, I gave my life to Jesus. Hallelujah. Anybody? I don't see somebody coming. If you're here, I pray you're born again before you leave. Maybe there is a need in your life, something heavy on your heart today. You may be that person I was speaking directly to, or you know somebody. Pain, suffering, physical pain. Jesus heals. He heals every sickness. This very minute, I will begin to pray for you. Are you coming for salvation? Coming to be saved? Okay, maybe there's somebody else to join her. Amen. She was just a little slow, but she's here. Anybody else want to be saved? Okay, well, let's just start over again. Come, give your life to Jesus. There's a man. And maybe there's another lady somewhere. Uh, pretty dark in here. I can't see you all. But maybe you're there somewhere. Come quick. Jesus is here. He saves. There's an, well, just ushers keep on bringing them. There's somebody else, maybe far in the back. Jesus saves today. He sets free from every sin, all of that sin in your life and that worry about what's going to happen to you. Well, Jesus is going to take you to heaven if you live for him. Anybody else? Come on, this is getting better. Amen. I'm so happy when I see people come who need to be saved. And I always pray nobody will leave till they're saved and sure of salvation. Anybody else? Just keep coming. Wow, keep on coming. Maybe there's one more. Amen. May you see people respond when you ask them to give their lives to Christ. Every one of you win somebody to Christ. All right. Lift up those hands. Would you do that? Lift those hands. It's a sign of surrender. Lift up both hands. I'm watching. And say this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I'm listening. You who came for salvation, say it with all your heart. Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. I've done bad things. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Come into my heart. Change my life. Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I receive Jesus as my Lord, as my Savior. I repent of my sins. Forgive me. Help me never to do bad things again. Make me strong to live for Jesus the rest of my life. Write my name in your book in heaven. Prepare a place for me. I believe from this day I am saved. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And you keep praying. You don't just repeat a prayer. You keep praying. You t ask Jesus to forgive your sins personally. Talk to him right now. We're going to pray for you. Would you stretch your hands toward them? And let's pray. Lord Jesus, needs are met. In the name of Jesus, salvation is real. Thank you for coming into their hearts. Thank you for giving them new life. Help them from this day to serve you with all their hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You can open your eyes now. There's a counselor ready to pray more with you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Six people. Follow him. Wants to pray with you. Somebody there waiting to pray more with you. Isn't that great? Let's put our hands together for Jesus. For Jesus. For Jesus. There is celebration in heaven when people are saved. Amen. And I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. And if they come back later, we'll pray for them too. I want to believe God with you. That God has something for you today. Healing of your body. Setting free of your mind. 
restoration in your life. I'm going to come down. Someone's going to help me. I'm going to sit in a chair right there. And if you need healing or you need prayer, I'm going to pray for you. So get ready. I'm ready to pray with you. Amen, 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 amen. I want you to begin to come if you need prayer. I'm coming right down there. Amen. Just begin to come. Maybe you need prayer for healing. I shared a lot of testimonies. Maybe one day I'll share yours. He heals every sickness. I talked about how the pain of sadness, broken hearts, tears is there. I talked about depression. I talked about discouragement. I talked about rejection. I could talk about so many things. Maybe you are somebody you know needs a miracle in that area. The pain is too much. Jesus sets free. I've told you from my heart what God gave me. So begin to come. I just want to reach out, lay hands on you, and pray. And then please go back to where you're seated. Come in the name of Jesus. Be set free. All pain, all sickness in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't have to bend down. I'll reach as high as I. In the name of Jesus, a miracle. Let it begin right now. Somebody on your heart, you're representing them. In the name of Jesus, do it today. Yes, Lord Jesus. Oh, set free today. Heal somebody. Today, he heals the heart, the kidneys, the back, the lungs, the skin. The blood pressure. Jesus heals it all in the name of Jesus. Testimonies to come. A mighty setting free. Jesus, you are everything. Touch. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I believe it today. Jesus, there are people representing others in the hospital, in the home, depressed. People need healing. Touch today every part of the body. Heal. Encourage today. Jesus loves you so much. Maybe you've been discouraged. You're single and you want to be married. Jesus can bring that right one at the right time. Maybe you're praying for a child. I shared testimonies, miracle babies in the name of Jesus. Lord, someone who's ready to give up, let them keep on going. Let the miracle come. Let this week be a miracle week. The business, Lord, the job, the promotion. Lord, give somebody double promotion in the name of Jesus. Someone's business, let it flourish this week. Lord, give ideas, I pray. Lord Jesus, touch people, the point of their need in the name of Jesus. Mighty, mighty Jesus, today be the head not the tail, be above and not beneath, be a success, rise to the top, see your needs met, God do miracles, this week to be a miracle week, Lord somebody ready to give up, let them keep on going and never give up, let the word of God encourage people today, pain, let it be gone, sickness, be gone. Oh, somebody against you, let it be turned around. Change somebody's story today in the name above all names, name of Jesus. We just reach out today and we receive from you, Jesus, in this place, something happening, something changing in your life. God is in this place. Hallelujah. He is here. Don't do that. No, please don't do that. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, do a mighty, mighty miracle. God, in this place, he is not finished with you yet. 
Hallelujah. You're very important to God. He knows your name. He knows all about you and he still loves you. Hallelujah, God. Somebody ready to give up. Let them keep going. Somebody thinks everybody's against them. Let them realize God is for them. God is for you. In the name of Jesus, you are important to him. He has a plan for your life and it's good. Hallelujah, God. Let your good plans be fulfilled. Let our destinies be sealed today. We are for Jesus. He is for us. If God is for you, no one dares be against you. In the name of Jesus, start someone in a new direction today. Let there be hope. Oh, Jesus, somebody thinks their business is closed. Tomorrow is a new day. In the name of Jesus, you're praying. God, give me a husband. God, give me a wife. God, give me a child. God hears that cry. Hallelujah. Victory in the name of Jesus. Lord, as I lay hands on people, lay your hand on them. Do your mighty works in this place. May you never be the same in Jesus' name. Lord, I am nothing but you are everything. Today, meet needs. Turn someone around. Change somebody's story. Oh, Lord Jesus, today, new hope, new life, a new beginning. Hallelujah. Lord, let people recover everything they have lost. Let there be hope today. Make a way where there seems to be absolutely no way. Lord, see the miracles as they happen. We believe it. Somebody may even have a miracle before you get home today. Yes, you may have thought you needed to quit and give up, but you have every reason to live because Jesus loves you. He knows your name, yes. Hallelujah. You care. Hallelujah. You care. Jesus cares for you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody I've touched already. You feel healing in your body in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, do your mighty works in our hearts, in our lives. Life is worth living. Hallelujah. You are somebody. Jesus is going to lift you up. You can live and not die. Hallelujah. You think there's no hope. You have every reason to live in the name of Jesus. Somebody on your heart today, check up on them this afternoon. Pray for them in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Be restored. Keep the faith. Jesus loves you. He's going to do some great things. He will speak into your life. He will show your mighty power. Jesus in this place oh hallelujah 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 young people god cares about you he wants to use you mightily hallelujah you have a business god wants it to prosper he'll give you ideas god touch someone's mind promote somebody in their work this coming few days even this week lord we saw a man get triple promotion do it, Lord Jesus, for somebody. Miracle job. Some of you, God has something ready for you. It's going to open up in a miraculous way. Don't give up. Stay close to Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus, do it. Your family, you may think somebody in your family is hopeless, but God knows, God cares, and he loves you so much. He loves you so much mama hallelujah in the name of jesus hallelujah quite reach out. hallelujah in the name of jesus jesus loves you i love you today i pray for you today i've shared the word with you today in the name of jesus do something big in somebody's life oh lord jesus so many people today needs are so many you may have come in with a broken heart but you can go out encouraged you may have come in ready to give up but you go out ready to live and be what god wants you to be 
in the name of Jesus touch young people there are so many young people today in the name of Jesus touch moms and, and dads and, and children and teenagers babies Lord we all need a touch from Jesus yes Lord oh Jesus loves you so much receive from Jesus receive from Jesus yes Lord Receive from Jesus, amen. Be what God wants you to be. Commit yourself to God. Trust in Him. He will bring it to pass. He will make it to happen. That thing in your heart today, it can happen. It can come to pass. Jesus is here. Jesus is here. He sets free from pain. He heals every sickness. He's with you today. Loves you so much. It's no accident you're here today. You're here because Jesus brought you today. In the name of Jesus, we praise you, Lord. You're touching people. You're giving hope, encouragement. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Name of Jesus, receive from Jesus everything you need. Yes, Lord Jesus, every person here today, in the name of Jesus, the little ones, Jesus loves them so much. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, He's touching somebody today deep inside your heart. Meeting a need in your physical body, healing you. Check yourself. You may already be totally healed. Jesus in this place today. Every pain, every sickness, every need, the tears in your eyes, Jesus touches your life today. Be set free. Every bondage in the name of Jesus. Every attack of Satan, every voice you've listened to, if it's not Jesus, turn it off in the name of Jesus. We love you. We praise you. We thank you with all our hearts today. Somebody here, God's going to give you that miracle baby. You're going to conceive, have a child. Maybe I'll see it next time I come in the name of Jesus. God's going to take you places you never thought you would go. Because he is faithful. He has a plan for your life. A good one. In the name of Jesus, touch the little ones. Touch the moms and dads. Jesus, may your perfect will be done in our lives. May we say, yes, Lord. I'll be what you want me to be. I'll go where you want me to go. God is here today. He loves you. Don't be discouraged. God is on the throne. He loves you. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Touch her. Yes, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be blessed. And, oh, receive what you need from Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You said lay hands upon the sick. Hallelujah. Some are sick. Some need healing. Some their emotions need healing. Somebody is discouraged. But be encouraged today because of Jesus. Because of Jesus we live. Because of Jesus we move. Because of Jesus we have a hope and a future. Name of Jesus. The mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus, do it for her. In the name of Jesus, touch this family. The name of Jesus. Be encouraged. Be set free. The bondage. Jesus breaks every chain. In the name of Jesus, you are here. Oh, Lord Jesus, we give you praise. We give you glory. Thankful hearts. Grateful hearts. Name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Somebody today, Jesus has become real. He's alive. With our God, all things are possible. Hallelujah. We believe you. Oh, we thank you in the name of Jesus. The worries and the anxieties, all the cares, all the burdens, he sets free. When he sets you free, you're really free. Do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Do it for her. In the name of Jesus, I believe. In the name of Jesus, power. In the name of Jesus, victory. In the name of Jesus, healing. In the name of Jesus, peace. Yes, Lord, for him. Hallelujah, do it now. In the name of Jesus, nothing impossible. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus in this place today. Receive from Jesus everything you need. Receive it right now from Jesus. There's healing. There's power. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Of Jesus, there is peace. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, you are here. Touch today. Oh, the power, the presence of Jesus. Yes, Lord, we believe you. Touch the children. Yes, your sister, in the name of Jesus, I believe you. Hallelujah, we believe you, Lord. Take away every sickness, every pain, every physical problem. Come, hallelujah, the name of Jesus. That name above all names, receive. Yes, receive from Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, touch it. Touch that foot. Touch that leg. Name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let her one day be walking without needing it. In the name of Jesus. Lord, do it. Do it, Lord. Let her have her mighty testimony. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There is healing. In the name of Jesus, there is power. In the name of Jesus, there's a double portion of his presence. Yes, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Oh, we praise you. Just begin to praise him wherever you are. Whatever you're doing, sitting, standing, just begin to lift your hands and praise Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We give you glory. Touch, Lord, a new touch on our lives. Victory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord Jesus, we give you praise. We give you thanks. We give you all the glory. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you thanks. We give you praise. Anybody else? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, touch her, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Touch now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Anybody else? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Do it now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, oh Lord Jesus. We praise you, thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Stand up and sing it.
Jesus has touched somebody today. Say, I'm the one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now you share the good news. Jesus is alive. Amen. Amen. God bless you.